Do you use the milliampere hour value to compare the battery capacities of different devices? This is the question that I asked in our YouTube community post and with the sample size of around 500, the answer is unsurprisingly yes. The MAH value is used to compare the battery capacities of devices. Some of you also say that you use watt hour, which is the actual correct unit to gauge a battery's capacity. Good job. And some of you also say that you're using the screen on time as the battery life gauge of a phone. And that's interesting. We'll talk about this later in the video. In today's world though, if we're shopping for a phone, then we are just gonna look at the MAH value because that is the only piece of information about the device's battery capacity. But when we are shopping for laptops though, well, they only use the watt hour value. Why do they use different units when we are talking about the same thing, battery capacity? And which one is the correct unit to use? I mean, you already know the answer, I'm gonna say watt hour. But the question is, why? Okay, so I want you to take a guess right now. Do you think this laptop has more battery capacity than this phone here? Let me know your answer down in the comment section below. I'll wait. And before we continue, please do like and subscribe and share this video with everyone you know because every time I see a post like this, it just irks me so much that people are spreading misinformation openly. And this is also the fourth version of this script that I've written and I'm filming literally the second time because the first version just, well, it felt wrong. So I just scrapped that first version and redo it entirely. Okay, back to where we were just now. Here's the answer. If we just look at the MAH value, then this laptop has 4920 MAH, but this phone has a 5000 mAh battery. So if I put this phone's battery into the laptop, then it should last a tad bit longer, right? Well, that doesn't make sense already, actually. The laptop's battery is much larger than the phone itself. So of course, this laptop will not turn on if I just take the phone's battery and put it in the laptop. Now, this is because the voltage is different. Laptops require a much higher voltage compared to a phone, and that is why their batteries are also much larger than a phone's battery despite having a similar milliampere hour number. We'll talk about this later in the video as well. So, if we want to know a battery's true capacity, then we will also need to know the voltage. Once we incorporate the MAH value with the battery's voltage, we get watt hour. It's just a basic multiplication between these two numbers and by multiplying a thousand as well just to cancel out the milli number, then we get the watt hour number. Phones come with many different types of batteries. Why we need to know its voltage is because we cannot assume all batteries will supply the same voltage even for phones. Phone A may have a different voltage compared to Phone S even though both of them have the same milliampere hour rating. But how can we know the voltage? Well, unfortunately, it's not as straightforward since phone brands do not list out the watt hour number of their device's battery. Apple doesn't even list any values or talk about the battery capacity at all. So we will have to look at replacement batteries instead. For example, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has a 4,441 mAh battery, that's a weird number, and it operates at 3.9 volts, so that's 17.32 watt hour in capacity. On the other hand, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is rated for 5,000 mAh, operating at 3.88 volts nominally, hence 19.40 watt hours. But let's take a look at the formula once more, and we will do some math magic here. Imagine that we just double the voltage but half the current. It will still result in the same watt hour value. However, the electronics will have to be designed differently to accommodate for this high voltage. That's actually what's happening in many new phones nowadays. There are a lot of phones that are using those cell battery nowadays and by connecting two batteries in series, we can double the voltage but the current remains the same. Hence, the MAH number is actually a lot lower than what we were advertised and that is exactly what's happening on phones like the ROG phone series, the latest Vivo X100 series, as well as the iQ12. If we read the website's footnote for each of these phones, it will say that the MAH value is actually only half of what is advertised. 
the MAH value that they are actually putting on their website and marketing materials do not reflect what we actually get. Now, is this misleading? Well, I don't think so. Every phone brand that uses a dual cell battery connected in series had to do this because people are so used to the MAH value measurement and not watt hour. So I can understand why they have an equivalent MAH number so people can compare it with other conventional single cell battery phones. I mean, imagine if the ROG Phone 8, which has an equivalent of 5,500mAh battery, is actually advertised to have 2,750mAh only. Everyone will look at it and just laugh at that battery capacity, but they don't realize that they themselves are the clown because they did not incorporate the voltage value while evaluating the battery capacity. Now, let's talk about laptops. The reason why laptops do not use the MAH number while listing their battery capacity is because it is just irrelevant. Let me give you a perfect example here. This gaming laptop has a battery rated at 4920 mAh, whereby this ASUS ZenBook 14 OLED UX3405 that we reviewed recently has a battery of 9702 mAh. That means the battery life of this Zenbook should be double of the gaming laptop, right? Well, this comparison isn't going to be that straightforward because even though these two laptops have more or less the same watt-hour value, the voltage is completely different. Gaming laptops require much more voltage because of its power-hungry components, whereby this kind of low-powered laptops don't really require that much voltage. It would be misleading to just compare the laptop batteries because we cannot just take this laptop's battery and fit it into that gaming laptop. Again, it won't work. Okay, now it's time for a quiz. How many times do you think that this Ugreen power bank can charge the ROG Ally? I've provided the MAH value, voltage, the watt hour value of both of these devices. But for this case in particular, uh, I think it's a bit tricky as one of those values that I've provided is a red herring. If we just use the MAH value, then this Ugreen power bank is advertised to have 25,000mAh, whereby the ROG Ally is rated to have 2,590mAh. And using just that value alone, then this Ugreen power bank can charge the ROG Ally for about 9 times, right? Well, we all know that's basically impossible. Using the watt hour value in the other hand, well, that is gonna reveal the true battery capacity of the power bank versus the ROG Ally. And that means this power bank has 90 watt hours, whereby the ROG Ally has a 40 watt hour battery. And that means this power bank can charge the ROG Ally for slightly more than twice, assuming 100% efficiency for some quick math, of course. It, it doesn't actually work this way, but we can get a rough idea of how much battery that we can expect if we just combine these two together. Now, if you've been paying attention, then you might have realized that there is a typical capacity and also a rated capacity. The typical capacity is technically the best case scenario, but the rated capacity is the guaranteed capacity and taken all the external factors into account, like temperature, all of those stuff. Yeah, there, there are quite a lot of manufacturing inconsistency, all of those stuff. Technically, we are always advertised the typical capacity, but actually, I think the rated capacity is the more realistic one that we're gonna get. Okay, now let's talk about screen on time or SOT for short. Screen on time is a famous metric to gauge the battery life, but it is, I would say, quite misleading. On the surface, it is a good representation of what battery life we are gonna get. If we're using the phone, the screen lights up, and that is counted as screen on time. But SOT is misleading because it doesn't tell us what background apps are running, what brightness the display is running on, and what task is actually running at that particular time period. If we're downloading or streaming more stuff, then it's gonna consume more battery. Hence, the battery is gonna drain faster than just, let's say, reading a book on our phone, for example. Our way of gauging battery life, though, is slightly more scientific because we try to eliminate as many external factors as possible, locking it at 100 nits of brightness on Wi-Fi only, 
and then running PC Mark 10 battery life test. It is not perfect, but we can use the result and compare the battery life with our past data since it is done in a very consistent manner. Bad updates or rogue apps, as in malicious apps, can also affect your screen on time by having unnecessary battery drainage. That's another topic for another day though. Okay, so before we end this very long video, I also want to talk about planes and airlines. The International Air Transportation Association, IATA, states that batteries below 100 watt hours are permitted to be on the plane. As for why the limit is at 100 watt hours, I can't find a proper source about this. How to Geek says that those who assess the risk when setting the policy feel that batteries of this size are still manageable should the worst happen. 100 hours is the nearest easy number to go with, I think. Now based on this, I can make an educated guess that they meant lithium-based batteries poses a risk of explosion and a bigger battery will pose an even bigger threat with a bigger explosion. I mean, the watt hour value is basically a different way of representing energy in joule. 100 watt hours actually mean 360,000 joule and all of that is converted into heat while the plane is in the air. Well, that's not a really fun thing to happen. Remember, the Galaxy Note 7 was only 13.48 watt hours. And that means 48,528 joules of energy and that already caused a lot of problems for everyone, including airlines. Now let's take a look at the facts again. According to iFixit's teardown of the Apple Vision Pro, they found out that the AVP is actually using three iPhone-sized batteries stacked on top of each other, and it totals to 46.08 watt hours. Each battery cell is rated for 3969 mAh and that means 11.61 volts in total for all three batteries connected in series. So dividing that value by 3, we can get that each cell is at 3.87 volts. I, I just want to find out the battery voltage, uh, this doesn't actually matter. However, the battery enclosure on the Apple Vision Pro itself only states that this thing has 35.9 watt hours of battery. And this is probably to enforce that 80% charge limit on your Apple Vision Pro so the battery would degrade slower compared to when we charge it to 100% all the time. That Anchor power bank though, it's the Anchor Mac Go power bank 6.6k. Yes, the community note is wrong because it links us to the Anchor 622 power bank instead, which only has a 5000mAh battery. Unfortunately, there is no spec sheets for this Anchor MacGo power bank 6.6k and I cannot find the voltage or watt hour of this power bank in particular. So I can't tell what's the exact battery capacity of this power bank, but we can do some quick math. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt that this power bank's battery are at 3.85 volts, just like the 10,000mAh version. Doing some math, that means that it is going to be 3.85 volts times 6.6 amp hour and that equals to 25.41 watt hours for this power bank in particular. It is still lower than the Apple Vision Pro's battery capacity, even after cutting off 20% from the true battery capacity. So yeah, everything about this tweet is totally wrong. And that is the end of this very long video. If you made it to this part of the video, I have to say thanks for watching once more. I really hope you enjoy this kind of video because I really do enjoy scripting and writing this kind of videos as well. I do have a background in electronics engineering, so it just makes me, you know, mad when I see a post like this online. So yeah, I don't think I have enough power to change the world to use the one hour value instead of using MAH, but I think this is a step forward. That is why I'm asking you all to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and also leave a comment down below so that the algorithm knows that people are really engaging with this type of content. And if you do like this type of videos, then do let me know what kind of topics that we should do next. And um, speaking about that, I think the next topic that I'm gonna do is thermal throttling. So do subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Woo!